Bad Boys 4 has the perfect title because it is truly ride or die time for this franchise. This is the time to show up because the franchise needs you. Will Smith needs you. And on that note, it is his first big movie post slap. So you got to decide how you feel about him now, now that that happened. I know a lot of you have strong opinions on the matter, uh, and I'll share mine. I do feel a little differently about him. Not so much so that I would refuse to see one of his movies, but I probably wouldn't have seen Bad Boys Ride or Die in theaters if I hadn't had to go review it. Although I have to say, maybe after listening to my review, I would go because I discovered it's a great summer movie. Like really, if you wanna go to the movies this weekend and get a fizzy soda, a delicious warm popcorn. Uh, you know, when I've had a lot of popcorn lately going to the movies and sometimes it's too salty and not good. But the other day I had like the perfect movie theater popcorn and I was like, oh, this is good stuff. And it's interesting, a uh, side note, I'm excited to, to see how this movie does on Movie Math on Sunday, but I've been looking at the ticket sales and the premium screens at Lincoln Square, you know, which usually are the first tickets to go in New York City, not selling that well. But on regular screens uh, outside of, you know, across the city, and like I check New Jersey sometimes too to see how ticket sales are doing in the burbs, the suburbs, the movies, you know, the movies ticket sales are solid. I think it's gonna do a lot of walk-up business. And I think it's gonna do a lot of business in standard theaters and they're flooding the market. It plays like in some theaters every half hour or every 45 minutes. It's an old school release model. Uh, for an old school movie, and it might just work. Uh, I'm really curious to see how it does. If it doesn't do well, it's the only reason could be Will Smith, because it's a really good movie. It's a very good movie, and it's a very good bad boys movie. And the last one did great, which was prior to the slap. So it would have to be that. So how did it feel watching the movie post slap? Well, Martin Lawrence does a ton of heavy lifting here. So does Jacob Scipio returning from the last film. I knew he would. He was so good in the last movie. I knew he'd be back. So it doesn't really feel like a Will Smith movie, interestingly enough. And his performance, we'll talk about it a little bit later in my review, but I'll just say here, it's a little muted. You know, it really is mostly Lawrence and Scipio. They, they really carry a lot of the film. And I think that is a very smart decision. I don't know if Will Smith was in on that decision, but it's very smart because it eases you back into watching a Will Smith movie if you do feel a little differently about him, you know, after the slap. You know, it's, um, I think it's very clever. We'll see if it works, it might not work, but I think this is his best chance. Then behind the camera, speaking of drama, there's Adil and Bilal, who are also back from the last film, which they also directed. But it's been a wild ride for them since then as well. Uh, they went through The Ringer, The Hate Ringer with Ms. Marvel. A lot of hate directed at that show, although it also did not have good viewership, uh, even though, you know, I, I enjoyed it, particularly at the start of the season. Uh, and, you know, by the way, she was one of the best characters, if not the best character uh, in, in, in the Marvels. But, you know, that, that, just, that whole thing just did, did, did not work out. But anyway, not only were they involved in that, but then Warner Brothers said that their Batgirl movie was so bad that they, the stu studio would rather take the tax write off than let it see the light of day. You know, we don't know if that statement's true or not, uh, because of course, Coyote versus Acme has been shelved uh, same, same way. Uh, although, you know, everybody who's seen that film thinks it's fantastic or, or at least very good. Uh, but, you know, that was the, that was the, I think this, that smear campaign against the Batgirl movie was really aggressive. And then after, I mean, I like The Flash, but a lot of people didn't like The Flash. Um, and I think, you know, people just wanted to get away from that. So I, the DC curse lives. And unfortunately, Adil and Bilal are, are involved in that or were. Uh, I think they're talented directors. I think they're very good and also very inventive directors, uh, which Bad Boys Ride or Die proves once again. Uh, you know, it, it, okay, so the RT score, we're gonna talk about uh, their future in Hollywood. I was gonna say something about Kevin Foggy, but just wait a minute. All right, so the RT score for this movie already is pretty solid. I'm gonna add another fresh tomato to the pile. And if it opens even just okay at the box office this weekend, I think they'll definitely work again. Kevin Feige, here it comes. Kevin Feige had said he would work with them again, uh, but so far, no, no deal. Uh, but there is a rumor going around, not substantiated, but there's a rumor going around that I'd like to believe is true, that they're gonna do another mummy movie for Universal. Uh, 
building off of the Brendan Fraser films. I don't know if he would be in it or not. Uh, he's obviously a very different actor these days, but eh, everybody still likes him. He's actually, I really like, you know, he's become more of a character actor, which happens to a lot of leading uh, uh, men. Uh, and I, I think he's very enjoyable. He just, just won a freaking Oscar. All right, so anyway, I not only really think they're a great choice for that material because of their very modern cutting edge sensibility, but also I think their Moroccan background will help bring some authenticity, authenticity to that franchise, uh, which I think would really help you know, it was very successful for a while there back in the day, which is why Universal was like, maybe we should bring it back, especially after the Tom, Tom Cruise is going to come up later in this review. But, you know, especially after the Tom Cruise movie crashed and burned. Um, you know, it's funny. This is almost becoming like a movie math episode, this review. And I, I'm going to talk about that, but I think there's just so much drama that's overshadowing this movie, behind the scenes drama, and that's not ever really a good thing for, for the movie. You know, you want people to focus on the movie itself. All right. So anyway, I would love it if Adil and Bilal got the Mummy franchise. I think they're a perfect fit with it. Uh, I would hope because, you know, some of their stuff is done that well. All right. So anyway, interestingly, though, speaking of authenticity, Bad Boys Ride or Die was written by three white guys. Fun fact, for those of you who don't know, the first Bad Boys was actually written for Dana Carvey and John Lovitz uh, before, of course, going uh, now historically, to Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. Uh, yet this Bad Boys movie, like all of the Bad Boys films, still feels very authentic. And I suspect it's because Smith and Lawrence continue to have a very strong creative hand in these movies. They're both comedians, they're both businessmen, and they have been improvising the dialogue in Bad Boys movies since the first one. Um, which Michael Bay actually encouraged. Uh, and at this point, they really understand the Bad Boys brand. You know, they're very, very good at it. And they're also still loyal to the OG films because speaking of Michael Bay, he has a cameo here. Oh, that was so great. I was like, Michael Bay. Uh, and he again directed the first two movies. Uh, also, there's a great cameo right after the Michael Bay cameo, just like a beat or so after it which was fantastic. My audience loved it, as did I. It was great. It was really great. It was quick, blink and you miss it, but it was fantastic. Speaking of Smith and Lawrence being all in, there's a really fun behind the scenes clip circulating on social media, which is actually doing a ton to promote this movie, uh, which makes me feel it was intentionally released and effective uh, that shows Smith filming a very cool shot that requires not just a portable camera rig, but that he has to wear himself and operate himself. That's some Tom Cruise level commitment. Remember, Tom Cruise was flying a motorcycle. I mean, uh, uh, he, well, motorcycles also, but flying a helicopter in the previous Mission Impossible movie. And he was also having to act as the camera operator and everything. So that was crazy. And this is like a mini version of that. And Smith has been as meticulous in building his own career as Cruise has. And also, there have long been rumors about Smith and his family having ties to Scientology themselves. Not the last time that Scientology is going to come up in this review. Uh, and you know, as I said, I think that's one of the bigger problems of the slap because it pushed Will Smith's drama and the rumors around him over the line. And suddenly those things became bigger than Will Smith, the movie star. Uh, same thing happened to Angelina Jolie, and she's also trying to do it to Brad Pitt, which, and she's coming very close to succeeding, I think, by the way. This last headline about his daughter dropping his name is brutal. And Tom Cruise, though, he came back, though. He came back from jumping on the sofa. So it can be done, although, you know, Tom Cruise hasn't been able to so much maintain it, although was that all the fault of Barbenheimer? All right, but if you can get past all this drama, how's the movie? As I said, it's really fun. And it has everything that you would want from a bad boys movie, and then some. In fact, I really appreciate and respect how hard this movie works with its fourth installment to keep you engaged, to keep the audience engaged throughout a two hour movie. They almost lost me a few times, but they'd always pull me back in. The first act is brilliant, very tight, fantastic. After they left the city, I, you know, I don't like camping so much. I was like, yeah, yeah. But then I, I, they would just keep getting me. They'd be like, oh, here's a funny line. Here's a great camera, uh, camera work. And I was like, that's great. There's also one great scene with Dennis Green as Lawrence's son-in-law. I won't ruin it for you. But it was so good. It had my entire theater, including myself, break out into applause. I mean, you just had to applaud the scene. It was so good. Miami here looks as beautiful as Dubai, sparkling on a tropical coast. And the movie is as colorful as this poster. I wore this shirt in honor of this movie and this poster. And the music is turned up to party. Oh, I loved it. 
And as I also said, Adil and Bilal are very inventive here as directors with all kinds of cool shots, many of them using drones extremely well. The choreography here with the action scenes and the flight path of the drones is like next level. Many times I was like, ah, you can just tell this shot is amazing. I can't believe they did it. Look at the way that guy came in at just the t right time. Did we just go up a spiral staircase? I mean, it was great. Uh, it reminds me, in fact, of Ambulance. Yeah, yes, that's right, Ambulance. A 2022 Michael Bay movie, not produced by Jerry Bruckheimer, amazingly enough, although we're gonna talk about the Bruckheimer in just a minute. But if you can get past, as I said uh, at the time, if you can get past the first 15 to 20 minutes of Ambulance, oh, it's a great movie, which also makes great use of drones. Uh, Jerry Bruckheimer, once again producing, and it's a trip to see the old school Simpson and Bruckheimer logo in front of this film. Don Simpson, for those of you who don't know, was Jerry Bruckheimer's producing partner. They made some iconic, iconic films, but tragically, Don Simpson died of a drug overdose in 1996. Bruckheimer, at 80, is still going strong though. He has been, he's never stopped. But lately, he's been making some really great old school movies. For instance, his Young Woman in the Sea for Disney feels very much like a 1940s film. And Bad Boys Ride or Die reminds you of what everyone loved so much about 90s action movies. However, while these feel like 1940s, 1990s, they have the technology of today, uh, which makes them, I think, still fun for audiences of today. I mean, at least I would hope so. But for all its glitz and glamor, Bad Boys still works hard to be grounded and relatable, particularly with Martin Lawrence's character. Lawrence is so strong here, he's so good. Not only thank, not only thanks to his performance, but he has given such a good storyline about getting older. With funny stuff like having to watch what he eats, I loved the opening scene. To a really well done near death experience. I was like, wow, this movie didn't have to go that hard, but I appreciate that it did. Balancing him out is Jacob Scipio, who again, as I said, I knew would be back from the last film. He has a prison fight scene. Oh, wow, I, I loved that one, I, I felt that. And he's, he's, again, just too good not to bring back. He was also hit hard, by the way, by the cancellation of Batgirl, where he had been cast, and that was supposed to be a big, another big break for him. The last Bad Boys was supposed to be his big breakout role, and it was supposed to have led to Batgirl, but the whole thing just came tumbling down. So, uh, which is unfortunate, because again, he's fantastic. So hopefully he can start again with this new movie, this new Bad Boys movie. I mean, he's fantastic. He and Lawrence, again, as I've been saying, they hold this movie up. Smith is good, he's good. He has a lot of screen time, but his performance is muted, uh, intentionally so. Perhaps because again of what happened with the slap. He's more of a leading man here. You know, he's a foil to Lawrence and Scipio. Uh, and again, if, if the, oh, there's also, by the way, there's a plane sequence that also was really so good. I was like, oh, this is such a great scene. All right, but I, I feel, you know, the movie again, very well put together. I think if this choice with Smith was intentional, it's a good one because it acts as a palate cleanser post slap. As for the rest of the cast, solid work with a lot of returning faces. I'd say similar to the Fast and Furious franchise, but where the two differ is that Bad Boys stays hyper-focused on Lawrence and Smith and now Scipio, adding him to the group. And they don't make as many installments either. And I think that has allowed this franchise not to become dilute, diluted, nor to play out its welcome. Although on that note, Tiffany Haddish shows up, a uh, particularly vulgar cameo. I can't believe that with all of his own problems, Will Smith would do a scene with Tiffany Haddish, who has her own problems. Although, she has also been linked to Scientology, so that's the only thing I can think that would explain putting her in this movie. Uh, and thankfully, it's a very small cameo. Uh, and poor Rhea Seahorn from Better Call Saul, she's stuck in a thankless dour role that, quite frankly, is not worthy of her. Uh, Eric Dane does a nice job as the villain. He's basically doing a pretty good Ron Perlman impression. Uh, as soon as, especially when you see it, you'll be like, oh wow, he is playing Ron Perlman. Well, Ian Grufford, remember him? Remember from Fantastic Four? He looks very good in a suit here. He plays a, a politician and he does a great job. But really, the movie is these three guys and it's fantastic. It's a really fun ride, a true popcorn flick. And if you like this sort of movie in any way, if you even kind of like it, I think you'll have a really good time. Again, if you can get past all the drama and only you know if you can. If this, again, as I said, if it doesn't do well, it's gotta be the slap, it's gotta be the drama because it's a great movie coming off of a movie that made $426 million. So that's my review of Bad Boys Ride or Die hitting theaters this weekend. And if you don't feel like seeing it in theaters, if you're not quite ready, 
I think it will also do very well on digital. You know, a lot of movies do better on digital these days. Is Bad Boys going to go in the same direction? We'll see again. We'll see. But I think it is a very good theater experience. It's a big movie. It's a big film. Again, get that fizzy soda and popcorn. But I do think it'll be a strong digital play as well. Again, if it's if it's if it's not, for, we'll see how the slap factors in. But otherwise, this should be a very strong performer for Sony across the board. It's very well made. All right, so share your thoughts down below, subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.